As we traveled through Ethiopia, BT News met with Minister of Education, Dr. Burhanu Nega of the Ethiopian Citizens for Social Justice Party, and a former political prisoner of the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front. We also met with Minister of Culture and Sport, Kajala Merdasa of the Oromo Liberation Front, to get their views on Ethiopia's current political moment, the nation's political future, and why the U.S. had offered such strong support for the regime change attempts by the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front, also known as the TPLF. Ethiopian Citizens for Social Justice draws its lineage from the CUD, a coalition who defeated the TPLF and subsequently stole in elections in 2005, and the Oromo Liberation Front has been considered a principal voice of the Oromo community since the 1970s. As representatives of long-time opposition currents, both ministers noted TPLF claims to represent the interests of the downtrodden against a dictator were less than sincere. They killed they harassed, intimidated, they, they displaced the Oromo, they looted the Oromo. So th this is known to the Ethiopian people and the international community. They know that there was a big problem between the TPLF and the Oromo struggle for the last 30 years. The most recent, not this one, but the one before this, engagement that I have in Ethiopian politics is in 2005. Um, there was some opening, we, we felt at that time, and we organized uh, a strong opposition party. Uh, we engaged peacefully, we have debated with the, the ruling party, which was led by the TPLF. Um, and what we saw at the end of that was, was the massacre of hundreds of people, we were jailed uh, for nothing uh, other than winning. Um, and it, it became increasingly clear, not only just the, not only our arrest, but also the rhetoric of the TPLF at that time. You know, most people think that TPLF started this talk of genocide now. Actually, the talk of genocide was taking place at that time. When they felt that they were losing the, the debates in the election, they start talking about interharmways. Um, you know, there is a genocide that is uh, going to be perpetrated by this legal, peaceful opposition. You know, once once we are in prison and we start going to court, we saw how the judiciary works, and it became increasingly clear that this is not a government that, in under any circumstances, would allow democratic dispensation in this country. Minister Merdasa further told us claims by the OLF Splinter Group, sometimes known as the Oromo Liberation Army, the OLF Shene, to represent the Oromo struggle were false. It is not an organization. OLF, uh, the Oromo Liberation Army, is one of uh, the branch of the OLF. Uh, the branch, I mean, one of the structure of the OLF when uh, we were uh, in the army struggle before uh, 2018, from Eritrea, uh, came back, uh, came to Ethiopia. Uh, again, uh, hundreds of them uh, came to a peaceful life uh, in 2019. Some people remained in the bush. Most of uh, the people who are in the bush now were newly recruited by TPLF. Uh, when uh, we came here, uh, the, when the TPLF understood that they are uh, no more uh, dominant in the EPRDF, and uh, when Prime Minister Abi came to uh, uh, Premier, they started underground recruiting uh, young people, unemployed people from the street, and some of them, their supporters uh, from the OPDO, then sending to the bush, to the OLA uh, movement areas. They infiltrated already. They infiltrated the OLA, and now the majority of them are <coughs> the TPLF recruiters. Of course, there are some elements of uh, OLF members, former OLF members, uh, but refused to come to the peaceful uh, struggle, legal struggle, uh, remained in the bush. 
So they don't have any uh, organizational structure. The, the leadership is not there. There are individuals, uh, most of them young people. So they don't represent the OLF. Uh, the OLF is here in, uh, in Addis. The OLF leadership is here. Dr. Nega also told us TPLF attempts to root Ethiopian politics solely in ethnicity didn't tell the whole story about how Ethiopians identified politically. They, they ethnicized our politics openly, officially. You cannot talk about Ethiopia. As, as, you know, even to talk about citizenship was considered you know, some, a manifestation of some kind of um, uh, chauvinism, uh, ethnic chauvinism. Um, all parties are more or less required, more or less pressured to form ethnic-based uh, political organizations. Uh, any pan-Ethiopian political party was uh, disparaged as anti-equality uh, of ethnicities, irrespective of where it comes from. Um, they worked at it. I mean, this is probably the only government I know that gives national ID on the base of ethnicity. The overarching identity that makes us all equal, that makes us uh, equal in politics, is our identity as citizens of the country. So that, that, was, that argument was, even when it was officially suppressed, even when official politics was ethnicized, that undercurrent was there. And in fact, in 2005, that's what was manifest. The TPLF didn't think that, you know, by then they thought they had buried you know, any kind of citizenship-based politics. And when the CUD came in the forefront and they saw that the public was fully in support of uh, Ethiopian identity-based politics, that is when the TPLF felt the, their, their broader long-term strategy of continuously dividing the society has not really uh, uh, a strong basis. And in fact, that's when they, after 2005, that they have abandoned any uh, pretense for democratic elections. Both ministers agreed that the TPLF regime change efforts gained the support of the U.S. and other Western nations because of U.S. interest in the region. It cannot be because TPLF is any more democratic. It cannot be because TPLF is any more liberal. Uh, it cannot be because TPLF uh, had provided a better governance to Ethiopia than the have the TPLF is the most corrupt regime in Ethiopia's history. It has stolen billions and billions of dollars from the, 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 the Ethiopian population. They know that. They know all this. N not a broader principle of democracy or idealism of that sort. It is about you, you know, however you define your so-called national interest is. Uh, it's not clear as such, but the Nile issue is a big issue, I think. Uh, that is a big problem. So they support uh, the TPLF to control the source of the Nile. The relationship between Ethiopia and Eritrea. We know that the, the Eritrean government in America, especially the Democratic Party, the Democratic American Democratic Party, in 1990s, uh, they tried to overthrow SAS. The Eritrean government knows that. That there are some elements in the America. By the way, the, when we talk about America, we don't we don't mean the whole America. There are groups, even individuals, uh, who try to manipulate uh, the uh, foreign policy of America. Uh, so there are some people in the government, especially uh, belonging to the Democratic Party having problem with the Eritrean government. And the relationship between Ethiopia and Eritrea, they are not happy. Dr. Nega also noted for us that it isn't rare in TPLF U.S. affairs for democracy to take a back seat. They fully supported the government, irrespective of the massacres, irrespective of the, um, the, 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 the election being stolen Western powers who advocate democracy, which we thought were allies of uh, democratic dispensation, were, were absolutely not interested in a meaningful democracy at that time. It was, it was 
for a person like me who have lived half my life in, in the United States, that was one of the, you know, you know you heard about it theoretically and things of that sort, but when you face it practically, when the, uh, the Zen U.S. ambassador uh, charged the affair, Kiki Hardenstein, came to prison to tell me to abdicate my, my victory as mayor so that the government would be still. Uh, you know, the, the, you see that and you say, uh, we are much more interested in democracy than, than these governments are. We are committed to democratic dispensation because we believe it is, it is good for our country, it's good for the future of this country. And you have this sinking feeling that democracy does not have a strong support from, um, from the international community as such. We asked both ministers how they viewed the recent elections, and while expressing critiques, both also emphasized their hope for the future. You know, some of us have observed um, serious problems in the way the election was conducted on the part of the ruling party. Do I feel there is a possibility for some kind of national dialogue and some kind of settlement? And I'm much more optimistic now than ever, and I really mean this. It's very easy to... Uh, live together. Uh, also, the people have s a long time relationships. Also, although there are differences of language, culture, but whether we like it or not, by historical accident, we came together at 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 one point. So uh, we can make an agreement, a constitutional order to live together, it is very simple.